On behalf of the Galena Interior Learning Academy, I am Dana Sowers, a staff writer for the Hawk Highlights, and I am with fellow staff writer Haley Jo Ivers. We are welcoming you to Galena, visiting motivational speaker, Native American leadership trainer, and performer Brian Frejo, who will be presenting the message, The Power of Vision and Action, to the community. Welcome. Thank you. What's your impression of the Galena community? Well, I've only been here about 24 hours, and uh, I love being out, out in the nature. I love being out, way out, away from, I guess, like, you know, modern civilization. So uh, coming out to the village is um, just a great experience for me. You know, like, I haven't been to Alaska in about seven years, probably. And so the last time I came, I went to seven villages. So <clears throat> coming here, you know, you guys are right by the water. I love the water. You know, you guys are right by this river. And so all these trees, you know, the snow, the weather's changing. So to me, you know, just being out here, I was hoping it would snow before I got here because it's Alaska and it's wintertime. So when I heard it was snowing, I was happy. So when I got out here, uh, it was just nice coming in, flying in, and seeing all the snow. So far, I've met some really nice people and enjoy being here at the school. What is your goal as a performer? As a performer? Well, I always kind of, uh, I always like to say like I would, that I'm a native performer because I love representing uh, our native people. I think it's important that we represent our people, whatever tribe you come from, whatever village, whatever community, reservation, city, wherever you come from, that you're proud of who you are and that um, that you let people know, you know, where you come from and who your people are and that, that um, you want to let them know that you're out here doing something, whether you're making music or you're performing or you're in education or you're an artist, whatever whatever it is that, that you love to do, that um, that you're not scared to be proud and be native, you know, so like as a performer, that's what I want to be. When I, when I first started DJing before I was really performing, I said I was a native DJ. And this is probably like 20 years ago. I was saying, I'm a native DJ, you know, because I wanted people to know that there were native DJs. Because at that time, there wasn't. It was mostly Puerto Rican, African American, Latino, white DJs. So um, that's one of the things as a performer that I always like to say, you know, that I'm native and I'm from this tri these, these two tribes. I'm from the Skeedy, Pawnee, and the Nukazogi Seminole. So I always let people know that where I, whenever I go somewhere. What's the most surprising thing that you have seen in your time as a mus musician and speaker? Mm. I guess there's so many things, like I've uh, seen so many crazy things happen performing, you know, from shows where there's like 5,000 people to shows where there's like 50 people, you know. But I always notice that um, when people come out to, to see an event or see a show or a performance, you know, usually they're really excited to be there. You know, they want to be there. They want to see what's going on or what's going to happen. Or they're curious. You know, and they're just like, oh, so what are these guys going to do? You know, they're, they're, they want to check it out. And so that's, for me, you know, like, it's always the same. I've been performing probably like, I was performing in grade school as a power dancer. But it was just kind of like something that, that I grew up doing. So I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll go dance. You know, so I go out and power dance. And I didn't think about it, you know, but as I got older and started performing and doing shows and doing events, you know, it was just like, you know, it was just a journey, you know, all of it. And so um, I guess those things, you know, like seeing people's reaction to, to what you do and, and how you do it, like that, that's, that's always, it's the same, but it's different in every community that you go to. What's the most important message you have for the young people? Well, I'm going to share a message tonight, and it's called The Power of Vision and Action. And that's one of the messages that I've, that I've been sharing over the last, like, probably like about four years. And it was called The Power of Vision. And then it was about your, uh, like, what you see in your mind, and what you dream about, what you think about, like when you're daydreaming, or when you're just thinking, you listen to music, you're just thinking about things, seeing what you want to do or where you want to go. And, um, 
and it was called the power of vision and in the last like couple of years I changed it to vision and action because you have to do something about it you know if you want to do something in your life you may have those goals and then you gotta like work towards those goals so you have to put action to it or otherwise it's just a goal sitting there it's just a dream you know that never happens but you put the work and you set the goal make the steps to get there then that's when you that's when like um, your journey starts it's kind of like it's it's um, not just I heard this, I heard this one time it's not just the destination it's the journey you know it's what happens in between those two those two places and so for me and that's one of the messages that I like to share because starting at the beginning you have the thought the idea the dream of what you want to do and then you have to work towards it if you really want to do that you know so that that's kind of part of the message one of the messages I want to share with the youth you know is is the way I look at goals and things you want to do in your life and, and it's embracing your gifts embrace your gifts that you have because somebody might be a really great singer this might be a really great dancer this person may be really smart or this guy's really funny you know we all have all these different gifts well, these guys know how to do bead work these guys know how to sing on the drum you know all these different gifts you know embrace the gifts you know and then when you do that you know, I think it creates opportunities for you because you're doing something that you that you're good at, that you really, you really like it, or you really love it. But when you really love it, that's when you, you uh, you're enjoying your life, you're enjoying your journey. What villages did you visit before building up? Uh, the other villages I went to, well, I started out in Fairbanks. That's not a village. I don't know if that was a village a long time ago, but it's like a city now. But I started there and I went to Fort Yukon. And then from there I went to, um, I, I can't remember all the villages. I was trying to think about this earlier. I went to Vinitai. And then I went from there to, uh, I went somewhere else. I, can't, I was trying to remember what village I was. But then after that I went to Arctic Village. And this is all in January and February. <clears throat> so it was really cold. It's like, like 50, 60 below zero. So that's cold for me, you know, where I come from. And after Arctic Village, then they asked me to go to Tana. And then I went to Tana. So that was the last village that I went to. And there's one more that I'm missing. I, can't remember which one was. I was trying to think of that. But um, it was five villages. And so after that, after I was done, I went back to Fairbanks. And then I was there for a few days and went home. But each village, each village was totally different from the, the last one. You know, and I met, everyone was different. Everybody that I met in each village, everyone at the school, the elders that I met, the people that shared, that shared their culture with me, you know, was, was amazing, you know, because I'm, I'm not really a cold weather person, you know, but I love, the, I love summertime, I love the heat, I got, still got my tan, you know. I love being out in the sun, being outside. Winters, you know, it's cool, but you know, when I came here, I, I really appreciated it, you know, to live, to be here in extreme winter and just be out doing things and like learning how people survive, you know, because I'm, I'm like, a, I feel like a, I'm connected to warrior people. They're called the Iluska. Iluska is like the warrior people, the warrior society. And we lived outside and traveled a lot. And so we have stories about that. We have stories of all these places that we went to. And where we got these certain feathers, we had these feathers that were all beautiful colors. And they said that they came from way south, and they're from South America. This is before we had horses. Then we had another ceremony where we had four uh, bear hides, four bear hides. And it was the four bears, and one of them was a white, white hide, it was a polar bear. So they said that our people traveled this far on foot, you know. Who knows how long ago, that hundreds of, hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago, we don't know. But so all of that, you know, sharing all those, those stories and, and it can maybe a connection, you know, to Alaska. You know, that, that's how I felt when I was here. I was like, man, like, you guys are just surviving this, you know. Like I had to adapt really fast and, and, uh, and I tried my best, you know, and I learned a lot. Where are you from originally, and what is your favorite, what is your native language? Uh, originally from Oklahoma, 
That's where I grew up, born and raised in Oklahoma City, just outside of Oklahoma City, in a place called Tornado Alley. You guys might have heard of that. It's where all the tornadoes come through. It's in Oklahoma, it's just south of Oklahoma City. And uh, it's where all the tornadoes come through that area. So I grew up around a lot of tornadoes, a lot of storms like that. And uh, we have a connection to that. We have a connection to the tornado, the tornado spirit, the elements, the, the wind, the clouds, the lightning and the thunder and those create the storm. So our connection and our people and our people's beliefs, you know, is that we're connected to that. So we're not afraid of it, but we respect it. We respect the weather, we respect those, those elements like that because they're powerful. And so that's where I grew up, that's where I'm from. And uh, I'm from the Skeety Band, the Pawnee, that's the wolf people of the Pawnee tribe. And the Nukazogi, the Seminole, that's the bear clan. So I have that connection to them. To the wolf and the bear too. Can you describe some of the rituals you shared with the students last night? Who did you learn with them? Yeah, last night uh, I was glad to be here for the screening of the the film that was that was screened last night, and uh, it's really um, educational, you know, and, and the topics that it talked about these different people in their life and different villages that they come from. You know, it was a powerful message and, and uh, I was taught when, we, when you talk about those things, you know, that, has, that have to do with life, that have, that have to do with your life and the challenges that we go through. You know, our people have going, been going through challenges since, since first contact with, uh, with Europeans, non-natives. We've been going through challenges and we've been surviving, you know, all this time. So we knew how to survive. And, and last night, when we brought up those, those issues and those topics that we talked about that are in a lot of villages, you know, that the young people struggle with, that the young adults struggle with, that families and, you know, and parents and elders struggle, that they go through, you know, it's a challenging time. And so when we do those things, you're supposed to pray, you know, you're supposed to pray with that so that everyone, maybe they feel things and they go through all these emotions and then, you know, they're, they're thinking about all these things. You know, it brings up a lot, and then sometimes you know it's good to talk about it or let it out, or you know maybe you want to sing a song, or maybe you want to say a prayer. You know, so where where we come from, you know, that's what we do. You know, somebody will sing a song, somebody will do that prayer. And last night it was a cedar blessing. It's a cedar uh, cedar blessing ceremony, and I was taught that by my uncle. His name was uh, Ronnie Good Eagle. He was a skeevy. He was a wolf. Um, kind of a wolf ceremonial man of our Skeety Pawnee tribe. And uh, he shared that with me. He showed it to me a few times. And then he said, uh, you know, someday uh, you may be doing this. You know, you may be doing this for people and helping people. You're going to bring this out and show you how this is how I was taught to do it. So he showed it to me. He said, this is, you'll do this this way and how you feel. And I was like, okay. I said, all right. You know, and he showed me that. And then he, he passed away a few years, a couple years later after that. And so, you know, we're the next generations to pick those things up, you know, to carry on those ceremonies, those traditions, you know, those songs, those stories. And so, that's who taught me, you know, and, and I was wondering why he was teaching me that, you know, but maybe he, he already knew, you know, I needed, to, I needed to learn how to do this. I needed to be one of the people that carry it on. So, that's where I learned that. What's an experience you'd like to share with the students? An experience? Yes. Oh. Uh, I guess I kind of overcoming, um, overcoming like any fears or overcoming, um, you know, feeling that that maybe you can't succeed, you know, that you can't make it. But if you never try, then you'll never know. So. You can just sit back here and just think about it your whole life, or you can go out and try. You know, that's one experience that, that you know, I had to get over that, you know, being afraid or being scared to go try to do something in my life and just try it and see what happened. So then when I tried that, you know, a lot of things happened and I learned, I learned different things, you know, in my life. And I was like, hey, this is cool, you know, and I met new people. Then I tried something else and then I met new people and, and I learned more. And then it took me over here. You know, it was like they all connected to, to the next place I was going. So that's one thing that I want to share, you know, that 
that don't hold back, you know, on something you want to do. Don't hold back. That's why I said embrace your gifts. Embrace the gifts that you have because your gifts will take you places. Is there anything else about the presentation last night that you'd like to add? The presentation last night? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, like, you know, it's great to see um, projects you know, come out that talk about our native people, you know, because we watch TV and we see everybody else, and we don't see our native people on TV. We have to make our own movies and show our own movies, you know, to see those. Every once in a while, you'll see a native in a movie or a TV show. You know, we don't have our own TV show. Everybody else does. You know, Canada has more TV shows about natives than we do down here in the lower 48. So when I see films and projects like that, I think it's really powerful, it's empowering, you know, that we can make our own films, put them out there and people can see those. So I encourage uh, this generation to be filmmakers, make more films, you know, mm -hmm. tell stories. You know, it could be any story. It could be an old story, traditional story that you retell now. It could be a, a futuristic story. It could be a comedy, you know, it could be a scary movie. You know, we have all kinds of stories as Native people. And so, you know, that's one thing that I want to encourage, you know, like, <clears throat> for this generation is go out and you know, uh, make things happen, you know, and, and this generation has has a lot of opportunities, you know, with the digital technology, so I think that's that's awesome and it's great for you guys. Is there anything else you want to say that I haven't asked? Uh, well, since I've been in Galena, you know, I noticed that the students here, you know, a lot of students, I just got here yesterday but a lot of students are really friendly and they're like, hey what's up, what's going, you know, waving and things like that. You know, I go to a lot of communities and it's not like that sometimes, you know. Nobody talks, you know, they don't say hello, they don't greet somebody or they don't they don't know how to. They were never taught how. So like here, you know, I I, I see you guys are really open, you know, you're open and you've been really friendly and, and even the people that brought me here, you know, they're the same way. They're they're really open how they talk and express themselves and you know that comes from your community, your family, your teachings, you know, and, and uh, you know, keep being like that, you know, keep keep being open like that. That's how you meet people. That's how you make you know, make relationships, you know, make friends. So that's one thing that I'd like to share, you know, that how I felt really welcome, even though I've never been here, you know, I've been to Alaska before but I've never been to Galena, so my first time. You never know when you've never been to, been to you know, a, a different community until you get there. And so since I've been here, you know, that's how I felt. So, like in our language, you know, God would say, uh, do dah hey, do da hey. And that means, like, uh, I feel real good right here, like where my heart is, in my chest, and my throat, where I breathe, where my breath comes out, breath of life, that's what they say. And that's what do dah hey means, that, that I feel like that. And you guys are awesome, doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.